So I have to do a head gasket on this 97 Plymouth Breeze. Shouldn't be as bad as the Accord that I did a while ago, but look at this. Oil in the coolant. As I've read, that's kind of a common problem for this car and this engine. The factory head gaskets were kind of weak. So anyway, the first thing you do is get this out of the way. Just pop these open. Then pop this up. And under there, there, you can see a clamp right there. Hopefully you can see that. You undo that clamp. And this pops up. Put that hose out. And let's get this out of your way. Next part is to remove the plastic intake manifold. Everything's pretty much connected to it. The fuel rail and the injectors. And they're all 10 millimeter bolts. There's two there, two there, 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 and there. And you also need to remove this hose because it's attached to that as well. And you need to remove some of these vacuum lines and this fuel line. Let's pop it out of here. Or just, yeah, that whole thing pops off. Just squeeze these two clips. And watch your eyes, because the fuel is going to come out of there. Next thing is to remove the lower radiator hose to drain the coolant. And make sure you drain it into a basin. And then make sure you recycle the old coolant via the proper avenues. Then this brake booster hose needs to come off. Pull it off from down here. God. Come on. And also these two bolts need to come off. They kind of support the fuel rail, but they're bolted onto the head. And these are 13 millimeter bolts. And to be able to move this plastic intake out of the way, you need to unbolt the throttle body from the intake with these two 13 millimeter bolts. And remove that plug, that plug, this line, and this line, and also this cable or wire. And also, these two 15 millimeter nuts, there's one right there, and there's another one down in there. I'm not sure if you can see it, can't fit the camera down in there, but it's in this general area. And you'll also need to unbolt one side of the EGR pipe. There's an end right there, and there's an end right under there. 
and I believe they're 8 millimeter bolts. And the lower nut can be taken care of with a 15 millimeter wrench brought in from down in this area. Now that should be loose enough. And uh, now we can get the valve cover off. These are all 10 millimeter bolts here. You are gonna have to get the coil back off because there's a 10 millimeter bolt back in there and the coil pack just gets in the way. These are all 10 millimeter bolts also. To remove this plug, you gotta get this red clip to pop out that way. I put the wires back on so you don't figure so you don't forget where they go. There's a ground strap that's connected to the valve cover. You gotta take that off. Now there are a few more things that need to be removed from the head. You got this bracket, that feels like a 13 millimeter bolt. These two brackets that hold this wire. Uh, those are 10 millimeter bolts, they're under the brackets. There's one and then a bracket comes off and then there's another nut under that it looks like. Then you need to remove this uh, coolant hose and the power steering pump reservoir, fluid reservoir, and the shroud for the timing belt. You'll also want to disconnect the crank or uh, the cam sensor plug has another one of those red clips on it. Pop that out. And that plug comes off. This is a 13 millimeter. You will want to disconnect the EGR tube from this side because these two 8 millimeter bolts right here are, um, it's easiest to access them right here as opposed to under there. All you need is an extension and a swivel. I would strongly recommend a magnetic bolt retriever, magnetic parts retriever, because you are going to drop things. And then remove the vacuum line off of the EGR controller. Um, it's on there pretty tight, you're gonna have to pull pretty hard or use a tool. Now that all this tedious stuff is done, don't unbolt the head yet because you need to get this timing belt cover off. And to do that, you need to lift the car, take off the wheel, get your safety stuff in order. Also make sure the parking brake is on and that you have a wheel chuck on at least one of the wheels and get a support under the engine. Uh, that's just a car lift. And you need to remove this plastic cover. It's just held on by these plastic push clips. It's pretty easy to get off. And then you need to remove the serpentine belt. And to do that, you loosen that 15 millimeter bolt there. 
and then use this 13 millimeter bolt to reduce the tension on the belt and then that will slide off. Easiest way to reach that bolt is with an extension. We might have to take this cover off also. Those are 10 millimeter bolts. One up here and one down in there. Now you can see what's really going on. And you just come down here and get the belt off of the harmonic balancer. And pull that out, set that to the side. There's another belt on the power steering pump, but we're not getting to that part yet. Now, now we can remove the harmonic balancer. They make a special tool for this to hold it steady, because when you try to get this bolt out, the entire engine is just going to spin. But if you have other things that will stop the pulley from spinning, you can use those. I have a U-bolt fed through the pulley, and I have a chain attached to the control arm. And I just attach the chain to the U-bolt. And use my 19 millimeter socket on my three quarter inch drive ratchet set, which I got from, I'll post a link in the description, to where you can buy a tool like this. To get the power steering pump belt off, there's a bolt here, a 15 millimeter bolt right here, and there's one there, and another one. here that you need to loosen and then the power steering pump will swivel and reduce the tension on this belt and then you can get that off you can get the belt off now the reason for the engine support is that you need to remove this motor mount and to do that, there are two 15-millimeter uh, bolts. One there and one there. And once you get those out, the mount will be disconnected from the frame. And then you take those three bolts out right there, and the engine side of the mount will be uh, free.
And then in order to pull this motor mount up out of here, you need to remove this coolant overflow tank. And this should be taken out anyway because it needs to be emptied of the contaminated coolant. There's a 10 millimeter bolt right here. There's a 10 millimeter bolt down in there. You just kind of have to pull this neck out of the way and hope it doesn't break. And then there are three bolts holding that plate to the engine. One there, one down in there, and one there. Actually there are four. That one is kind of held on to the um, alternator bracket. So you just take out those four. This is a 13 millimeter. These are all 15. If you can slip this end, this little nub here, out from behind this bracket, then it'll be nice and easy to pull this plate up out of here. Well, that's belt. Now inside of there you can see the timing belt and I still need to get off the harmonic balancer to get this cover off the rest of the way. And also that idler needs to come off as well. And you'll need to disconnect the exhaust manifold Instead of leaning behind the engine and trying to figure out all the bolts back there, just disconnect it right there. You can easily get to these two bolts right here. They're either one half inch or 13 millimeter. And uh, you can get to these from under the car. To remove the harmonic balancer, you need to use a harmonic balancer remover tool which you can rent at Advance Auto or you can buy from a link that I will post in the description. Now what you want to do is just thread the pusher rod slightly into the end of the uh, jaw puller then put the long pusher rod into the bolt hole. Now you can put the uh, jaw puller on and then just try to hold it tight with your hand and use a wrench or something to start tightening the pusher down and use a 15 16 wrench to hold the jaw puller steady getting the jaws to clip and stay clipped on these flat parts of the uh, pulley. So I have to use a small bolt in the end of here to act as a stop to uh, hit this rod because this rod isn't long enough. Otherwise this rod just goes in to the uh, threaded pusher rod. So that'll go in there and that bolt will act as a stop so it can push this rod in farther. Well not push the rod in farther but allow this pulley to come off more.
All right, finally it is off. And you need to remove this idler pulley. That's a 15 millimeter bolt. And now the final part to removing this plastic cover is these two eight millimeter bolts. So this whole alternator bracket needs to come off and to get that off, you need to remove the alternator first. So you gotta take this bolt all the way out. This is the tensioner. And then this bottom bolt, which is 15 millimeter. And you need to take this bracket off. That's held on by a 13 millimeter bolt. You can get to that bolt right there. There's another bolt right there. There's also a bolt right here that needs to come out. You have to remove that bracket by taking out the two other bolts that hold it on. Finally, this stupid little plastic cover comes off. And now you can see all the timing belt stuff. This is the tensioner. This is the crank. That's the water pump. Um, what else? And up there is the camshaft bracket. And before you take the timing belt off or the head off or anything else, make sure the engine is set at top dead center. There's a mark on the cam sprocket that needs to align with the mark on the plastic here on this pulley. And there's an arrow in the block on the block there and those two marks need to be lined up. Now to remove the timing belt you need to loosen these two 13 millimeter bolts so when you loosen these this tensioner is going to slide down and when you remove the bolts the tensioner will come out and you can replace this tensioner if you want but I'm not going to because this one is perfectly good and strong so now the belt should be loose enough to start coming off. Now the timing belt's off. Now the next thing to do is remove this pulley assembly here. There's a 13 millimeter bolt there and one there. Then you can remove this back plastic cover once this is off. Actually the cam sprocket needs to come off before this back plastic piece comes off. There was another guy on YouTube that used a C-clamp and he just clamped the uh, sprocket and used the C-clamp as leverage, but all right, that worked. C-clamp's the way to go. Now, finally. You can take out 
that 13 millimeter bolt, that 13 millimeter bolt, and that 13 millimeter bolt, and this black plastic little nightmare will come off. Sorry, those are eight millimeter bolts. And there's a bolt right there. All that just for this. And look at this. This is all timing belt dust. Finally, the head can be unbolted. After the head is unbolted, then you'll be able to unbolt the power steering pump reservoir from the head once you can bring it out here a little bit more. But there are 10 15 millimeter bolts that hold the head on. There's one more hose that's attached to the head right down here. And there's a plug right there that you need to remove. And once you get the head to slide forward enough, you can reach behind this and get out the two 10 millimeter bolts that hold it in. Um, this is what I used to get those out, to reach them. And then you need to disconnect this um, ground strap. It's a 13 millimeter bolt. Okay, now there really is one more thing holding this on. It's the O2 sensor wire. There's the plug. Just unplug it. Oh man, that is an ugly head gasket. Now you want to prepare the head for the machine shop. Because whenever you do a head gasket, you should get the head shaved so that you know you have a perfectly flat surface and that the head didn't warp. And so that the head's not warped when you put it back on. So remove this. Oh, what the fuck is this thing? So remove the uh, coolant fill head adapter. Remove the exhaust manifold. You can probably leave the EGR on there. It's. It's uh, it's metal. I don't think it's gonna break. You can probably take this off. The final thing you need to do to prepare the head for the machine shop is remove the valve train and the cam. So to do that, all these 10 millimeter bolts need to come out. <clears throat> they're in there pretty tight. I believe they're stretch bolts and should be replaced. Personally, I'm going to reuse these. It's up to you to make a decision about what you want to do. These are up on the top of the engine. They're easy to replace. The head bolts are stretch bolts, and I will replace those with new ones. After you have this top part off, the cam sensor needs to come out, and then the cam will slide out.
And I did take the EGR diaphragm off because it's easy. While you're waiting for the head to come back from the shop, you do a few things to prepare the engine bay. Basically, you can uh, replace the water pump. Just rip the old one off of there. Get your new one ready. And you can order up your new parts like your timing belt, exhaust gasket, and whatever else you want to replace while you're in here. Idler, uh, timing belt idlers or whatever. I'm only doing the really important stuff that's critical to the engine and also to safety. So I'm replacing the exhaust gaskets because they're right in the engine bay. I can't have any exhaust leaking. I'll post links in the description as to where you can buy this stuff. And to reinstall the water pump, make sure the gasket surface is clean and smooth so that the gasket makes a good seal. And for the and you can prepare the head gasket surface with a very light abrasive disc like this. This is how I do it. A lot of people are going to be like, oh, Jesus Christ, you're going to ruin it. Well, I'm not going to ruin it. You might if you try this. But the way you do this is you just... Very lightly go over the uh, block surface where the gasket touches. And make sure it's uh, smooth and clean. You're not looking to take off metal you're just looking to take off the gasket material and just make a smooth surface for the new gasket to rest on there are other methods to clean the gasket off if you want to find out what those are if you're not comfortable with doing this you're just gonna to have to look them up this is just the way I do it and that's the only way I'm gonna do it so to put the new water pump back on make sure you have the gasket set in there you can use some blue RTV to help it stay in there while you put it onto the engine. Finger tighten all these 10 millimeter bolts by hand and then tighten them in a crisscross pattern. So this bolt, that one, that one, that one, that one, that one, something like that. And uh, they're supposed to get torqued to 8.75 foot pounds, but my torque wrench doesn't go less than 10. So these are all getting done to 10 and it's gonna be fine. Thanks for watching. Obviously there's gonna be a part two, so stay tuned and subscribe. And also hit the like button if you liked the video. Thanks.